To learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Okay, so I'm back at the chicken coop again today. It's completely functional. Got the grapevines in there so they can roost and we got the nesting boxes and Caroline has decided that the chickens have nine more days in the house and then they're coming outside. So I got to get it completed. But I uh, wanted to put wheels on this, tires. So underneath this, I have hardware cloth. I guess you, in case you haven't seen the previous videos, I'll show you what the hardware cloth looks like. It's just a, a screened material here on the floor. And so when they do their duty, that waste will go right through this hardware cloth. Occasionally, you're going to have to sweep it and kind of knock it down. And so you have to get your own broom. Don't use the house broom for it. But that will sit down on the ground and create compost. And it really is good compost. But after a while, this is going to get filled. Right now, I just have it on bricks. Of course, I can lift it higher. If I have it on wheels, I can just move it and let the sun hit the compost. And it turns into compost completely. What happens is, It'll turn into compost about every six months. You'll have to move this probably every six months. But the top layer still needs to compost. So when the sun hits it, it I think accelerates the process. I don't, I'm not sure about that, but it kills the bacteria. So I got to put wheels on it. Well, we were going to do bicycle wheels. That's what I was looking for was bicycle wheels. But I think Carolyn wanted to keep it kind of nice looking and didn't want it to look bad. So she asked me to buy these. Now these were $40 for four wheels and I only need two wheels. I'm gonna put like a, a lift handle up on the front. We'll just lift it up and we can move it around like a backwards wheelbarrow, I guess. I don't know how to put it. So basically $10 a piece, but I'll be able to use them for other things. This wheel is not inflatable. It's just a rubber wheel. I've never seen one like this. I mean, it looks like a real wheel. As a matter of fact, when I come over to my wagon that I use for everything, hauling wood, all of it. This is a inflatable wheels. You can see the, the valve stem there. And they're exactly the same size. 4.10-3.50. And I actually think I might use this if I ever have a flat. Trying to get an inner tube for this was a nightmare. I had to drive all over the country trying to find an inner tube for this. I might just replace it if I have to. I don't know. When you get on Amazon, you look at these wheels, it has all the components you need for the wheel. You just go down there and it says other items purchased with this. And so it comes with this pole. It doesn't come with, I should say. You have to buy it separately. And so that just fits right down in there. And then it has these little brackets. Well, bracket is the wrong word. Retainers, I guess is a better word. It's got a little Allen screw in it. And so what you'll do is you'll put the retainer on the pole. You put that inside the wheel. And now you screw the retainer in place. Now the wheel can't move. And so I got eight of those. I don't, I don't know if I'll need all eight or not. We'll see. Uh, I might need a spacer. They did not have a pole long enough, so I bought two. And I'll just run them independently, it's no big deal. This is gonna be a fairly simple project. I don't see the, a big deal. The hardest part about this whole job, I think, is I'm gonna have to lift this back up on its side and uh, get it off the concrete bricks. That's gonna be the hardest part. And that's not even that hard. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, of course, a longer piece, but using this as an example, I'm going to take uh, some 2x2s. Two I'm going to just attach it right on top of these 2x2s. Two and then what I'm going to do then, I've just drilled a hole in here for demonstration purposes. Then I'll just be able to run that pipe right through these holes. I, then I don't have to modify anything. I can just use a little piece of that metal. And the thing about that metal pipe or that metal pole or whatever, is I have so many other uses for it. When I fix the well, actually I want to use a piece of it for the well. So 
I don't want to just waste it. Otherwise, I could just run it all the way across. The measurements doesn't have to be exact on this. I'm just going to put it up there like that. I guesstimated about a, a foot. And it'll be like that on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to bore a hole through the wood here. Now this one is going to be very critical that you measure out how far you want it. And I'm just going to put it like six inches. But then every hole that I cut is going to have to be six inches. That way the alignment isn't skewed on the wheel. If you don't do the six inches, it could be misaligned, just you know, like a car alignment. And the other problem is, is if uh, you do that, it's gonna be harder to pull. You'll be dragging more than you'll be rolling. Okay, so I got my retainer here and I got an Allen wrench because that's what it takes is a little Allen screw there. Okay, so just tighten this on and that's all there is to it. And so I'm gonna put the wheel on and then I'm gonna cut the, the bar with the grinder. Okay, when I got it on here, I discovered that the wheel still drags my design here. And so that means I'm gonna need a little bit of a spacer right here. Now I could use another one of these, but I'm not going to uh, because, you know, they cost money and why waste money? When I got this two by two here, I just cut off a little piece and make an inch and a half spacer with just that, that and it can float around all by itself. So here's the spacer, similar to what I showed you before. And so I'm just gonna slide this right down. I'm not gonna attach it or anything. It's just gonna slide down and now it'll just space that out. Okay, so now the wheel is on, spins freely. Got my little spacer here that I showed you. I could have attached that. Now I've got it on, it's like, man, I should attach that, but that's okay. I'm all right with it and then if I run it through these two pieces. That gives this the space uh, so it doesn't drag up against the building. I mean, now that I've done it, I could have done things differently. Now I think, huh, I should have done that, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. Then I got my support over here. And so now it won't bounce around. I put a little screw right here. I just drilled it in just to kind of keep that bar from bouncing up and down because it was my bit was a little bit bigger than what I needed. And then I got my other retainer right here. And then I'm just gonna cut this bar, then that'll leave me a little bit for what I wanna use for the well. Now it's gotta do is kinda of duplicate it on the other side. The other side is not designed the same as this because this is the nesting box here. There's no nesting box over here, so I'm gonna to have to cr create a frame over here. Okay, so you see I had to build a frame here because I had a board here, way out here. And I wanted to, like I said earlier in the video, save as much of that bar as I can. So I made this as short as possible. You always gotta be watching when you're using that grinder. You'll catch something on fire every time. So the sawdust that I got from boring the holes out caught on fire. <laughs> if I hadn't seen that, it would have caught the whole thing on fire. Gotta be careful. Keep watch.
Okay, so I got both wheels on. So now I need to think about putting a handle on somehow. The wheels work. <laughs> I hope I can inspire you to get some tasks complete every day so you can live your dream. Thanks for watching.